Howdy folks, welcome to the patch 9.1 test server in World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. Patch 9.1 is not really a major content patch. What patch 9.1 is mostly about is fixing everything that went wrong in patch 9.0. Micro lag, game freezes, crashes to desktop, things like that which have affected so many people when 9.0 came out. That's mostly the focus of what's happening in 9.1. As such, there's not a massive amount of new content available to show you, although there is a new map based on Kharkov. But as far as making the game more stable for you guys, the paying, or in some cases, the not paying customers, um, Wargaming have done a pretty good job with patch 9.1. The micro freezes, the, the lag, the crashes to desktop are mostly a thing of the past. One of the other things that they've done in 9.1 is to do with historical battles. And they're basically continuing the pattern that they already established in various different micro patches since historical battles were introduced. They've conceded the point that trying to give people massive tanks like the Yag Tiger is just creating far too much matchmaking limiting for one team. Operation Spring Awakening is still in the historical battle uh, selection. But the Battle of Kursk and the Battle of the Bulge have been removed and replaced with two new historical battles. Operation Spring Awakening, the Battle of Lake Balaton, here on Erlenberg, is still there, and the Tiger II is still the biggest machine available for the Germans, with the ISU-152 the biggest machine available for the Russians. With the Bryansk Front Battle, they're scaling things down. KV-1s, T-34s, Stugs, Panzer IVs, nothing bigger than that, which should, in theory, allow much more matchmaking weight to have bigger teams on both sides and better battles. Same with the Siege of Tobruk, where the biggest machine the British can use is the Crusader, light tank. And for the Germans, the Panzer IV D, the Stug III B. Um, and yeah, so smaller tanks, more matchmaking weight available for both teams, uh, which should, in theory, allow us to get bigger teams and more exciting battles. Unfortunately, as on the live server, nobody's playing historical battles, which is a real shame, because I really had high hopes for this game mode. I have never seen more than three people in the queue, in total, for both teams. It's just, it's just not happening. There are also a couple of new medals that have been introduced, primarily for artillery drivers. We've got one here, Gauls Medal. You have to drive an SPG and cause damage exceeding 10 times the hit points of your vehicle. You cannot destroy any allied vehicles and still get this medal. And hits on allied vehicles aren't counted. This is for random battles only. There's another one down here. Stark's medal. While driving an SPG, destroy at least two enemy vehicles and receive at least two enemy hits that cause damage or are blocked by your armor. Uh, you also have to survive the battle for this, random battles only. And again, hitting allied vehicles doesn't count. Total amount of damage received and damage blocked by armor must be at least two-thirds of the hit points of your vehicle. So getting shot at by Panzer 1Cs is probably not going to get you this medal. Now, I'm certainly not going to just sit here and read you all of the patch notes. Uh, if you're that interested, I do encourage you to go to the World of Tanks website, check out the patch notes for yourself. But some of the more significant changes are for the light tanks. The upper limit for the range of battles for tier 4 to 7 light tanks has been reduced, so much less harsh matchmaking for light tanks. The promised nerf to the camo rating of tank destroyers when firing through concealment has arrived in patch 9.1 after firing visibility factor for all tank destroyers except premium, so not for premium tank destroyers, has been aligned, mainly increased, with the factors for the same guns on other types of vehicles. So the whole thing of tank destroyers being able to fire through a bush and not be spotted when another tank with the same gun sitting right next to them will fire through the bush and will be spotted, that's going away. Speaking of light tanks, the VK2801 and the MT25 have both received substantial buffs. Their crossing capacity, or their terrain resistance, on solid, medium and soft terrain has been increased across the board. This basically means that the tanks are going to be a lot more mobile off-road. The T801 has also received a speed increase from 60 kilometers per hour 
to 68 kilometers per hour. Same deal for the MT-25. The ground resistance of the suspension on all kinds of terrain has been radically buffed, which means that the VK2801 and the MT-25 are both going to be a lot more mobile off-road. The MT-25 is also getting an engine power boost from 600 horsepower to 700 horsepower. Some changes for the M4 Sherman as well, when it's using the 105mm howitzer. Aiming time increased from 2.3 to 2.5 seconds. Reload time increased from 8 seconds to 9 seconds. Bad news for all the derp Shermans out there. Some incredibly good news for the A20. It's effectively no longer getting scout matchmaking. <laughs> its two upper battle levels have been removed. So that's in addition to the upper limit for the range of battles for all tier 4 to 7 light tanks. So that's fantastic news for A20 drivers. One of the other new things about patch 9.1 is the display of what they're calling marks of excellence on the tank barrels of your tanks. You may have seen pictures of uh, German tanks with rings around the barrel. These are kill markings. Displaying the number of tanks that they've knocked out. They've adapted this for World of Tanks and it's going to be based on the average amount of damage that you have done in your tank throughout the course of the tank's entire career, not just based on one battle. Um, and not just the direct damage done, but also assistance or spotting damage, so good news for scout tanks as well. Unfortunately, it doesn't appear to be retrospective. Uh, it looks like it's going to have to be something that you have to go out and start earning from the uh, onset of patch 9.1. This is my Comet. Uh, I have an average of almost 1400 damage done per game in the Comet. Uh, and I've done almost 400,000 assistance damage in the Comet over the course of 45 games and nothing on the barrel of the Comet. So it looks like this is going to be something that you're going to have to go out and actually start earning once 9.1 hits the live server. You can see here, display marks of excellence is ticked, but nothing. So uh, kind of disappointing that I can't actually show that to you, but it's coming in 9.1. There are also some changes that you can make to your graphics settings. Specifically here, you can actually mess around with the field of view. Or switch to dynamic field of view, which will give you the maximum view angle when the camera is as far away from the vehicle as you can get, and minimum viewing angle when you're zoomed into the vehicle. So, a whole host of minor changes, uh, and some not so minor, that are coming in patch 9.1. One of the first things that you're going to notice as soon as you jump into a battle in 9.1 is that everything sounds substantially different. Stuff also looks a little different as well. You may notice that the exhaust effects from the engine of your tanks looks better. Uh, that's received some tender loving care and attention. The sound effects have taken a major step, in my opinion, in the right direction. They're a lot more realistic now. It certainly sounds to me like they've been taking some cues from Gnome Father's historical gun sounds mod. When you're zoomed in, in sniper mode, you can actually hear the crew reloading the gun. When you're inside the tank, or in sniper view, the external sounds are muffled. They've increased the range at which the game will actually feed you sound effects from 300 to 600 meters. You can hear much more of what's going on on the battlefield. They've also messed around a lot with positional sound effects. It's now a hell of a lot easier just by listening to tell from which direction the various sounds of the battle are coming from. There are all kinds of little features that just go towards increasing the sense of immersion, like right here, where I suddenly rev the engine of the mouse and you get increased amounts of smoke coming out of the exhaust. You can now hear the shell being ejected whenever you are buttoned up inside the tank after firing the gun from sniper view. You can hear the crew reloading 
the gun when you're buttoned up inside the tank in sniper view. I think they've done a fantastic job with these new sound effects, but it's not all about the sound effects. Killing a tank is a lot more visually satisfying now. There's a hell of a lot more in the way of pyrotechnics that are generated whenever a tank gets knocked out. And then there's the new map, Kharkov. And this is really the only new piece of content available in uh, 9.1. Brand new map, but it is very, very impressive. Special thanks to Mongoose Jake from the North American server who uh, teamed up with me and allowed me to bring you this map preview of the new Kharkov map. As you can see, it's an urban map and it's a winter map. And yet, despite the fact that it is very, very much an urban map, there are some massive wide open areas that make this just as appealing for light tanks and tank destroyers as it's going to be for heavies and mediums. This may even be one of the few urban maps that doesn't completely suck for artillery. Hell of an achievement. The major built-up area on the map is this sort of central ring that runs around the town centre. Town centre, which is located down in the southeastern end of the map. And yet, despite the fact that this is the most heavily built-up area, there's still plenty of space for manoeuvre here. Around here in the west, this is where there is most of the open ground, but it's all on much, much lower ground than the rest of the map. So people fighting it out here, light tanks, medium tanks, are probably going to be able to do it without being bothered by the guys in the city slugging it out in the heavies. They've managed to provide, despite the fact that this is all taking place inside a city, so flat ground, they have managed to provide lots and lots of different levels of elevation. For example, here. You can see some cover there in the southern flag. A mixture of hard and soft cover. Cover that can be removed by gunfire and cover that cannot be removed by gunfire. Allowing guys to cap in a position of relative safety. Of course, that's a bit of a double-edged sword. If the uh, capture alert is going off and you can't actually see anybody inside your cap circle, well, there's only one place they can be. And we're moving up here towards the city centre, and this is very, very impressive. Again, you can see along the roads. The roads tend to be at a sort of lower elevation than the surrounding terrain, which is great news for tanks that like to go hull down. There's all sorts of places where tanks can go hull down on this map, particularly here. Get a load of this. Lots and lots and lots. I mean, it really looks like a battle was fought here. Flak 88 guns, knocked out tanks all over the place, wrecked vehicles burning, buildings burning. Once again, you can hear the new sound effects there, of the, uh, the shell being ejected after I fire the shot. I think when they do get around to releasing an encounter mode for this map, it's probably not going to be a great mystery where the flag's going to be. It's going to be right there. Look at that. I really do feel that they've done a very, very good job with this map. You've got tight, narrow, enclosed city streets like this, opening out into wide open plazas and thoroughfares like this. There really does seem to be something for every different type of vehicle in this map. Now here's something that I hadn't actually noticed until I was watching the video after driving around the map. Have a look at the corner of that building right in front of me in the middle of the screen. Notice. It has ground floor windows, which you can see through. That is going to provide hard cover for your tank, but people are going to see you waiting around that corner, and it's going to make things interesting if you're trying to side scrape around that corner. Because you can't just see through those windows, you can shoot through them as well. There's also some new, completely pointless, but very, very pretty, destructible scenery. 
this end of the map over at the northwest is where most of the wide open ground is, although there is still a lot of cover here as well. And this is probably where you're going to get most of your tank destroyer, light tank and medium tank action. They've got a really nice mix of uh, terrain obstacles, soft cover, concealment, hard cover, destructible cover and non-destructible cover. I think there's going to be a very, very nice place to fight it out here when you're in a, a fast medium or a light tank. Just, you know, watch out for artillery and those tank destroyers. So that's Kharkov, the new map. Uh, from initial impressions, I do like it. And it's nice to see big maps making a comeback into World of Tanks with patch 9.1. While we're here, it's also worth pointing out that there are some new interface changes, specifically a more detailed information available on the battle results screen. Here's the mouse battle that I played on Comoran earlier. Not just shots fired, but the difference between damage penetrations and splash damage. Damage that was caused at a range of more than 300 meters. That's a new one. And the number of tanks that you damaged versus the number of tanks that you actually destroyed. All available here on the post-battle summary screen. All in all, I'd have to say patch 9.1 is a pretty good patch. It's focused more on fixing stuff that went wrong, rather than introducing new content, even though there is new content in 9.1. We've got the new map, for example. But the days of getting a patch every two or three months with an entire new line of vehicles, or even an entire new nation of vehicles, are long gone. Wargaming aren't concentrating on that for the foreseeable future. With the introduction of HD tank models in patch 9.0, um, and with the fact that there are still the overwhelming majority of the tanks already in the game that don't have HD tank models like the Centurion Mark 7 here, their focus is on pretty much polishing up and fixing what is already in the game rather than introducing new stuff. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm quite happy with them taking that direction. So that's it for patch 9.1. As always, there's a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't cover during the course of this video. If you want to see the full details of what's coming in patch 9.1, go and check out the patch notes at the World of Tanks website. Link in the video description down below. As always folks, take care on that battlefield, and I'll catch you next time.